Hi guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be going through the properties of polymers. Now, if you're watching this, you've probably started the topic of polymers and uh, you've probably started having a look at some different types of polymers. And you're probably aware that polymers are everywhere around us. We've got lots of different types of polymers from the clothes we wear to the seats that we sit on, okay? And what you might have already started wondering is why do we have all these different properties for these polymers? Why aren't they all the same? Well, it's a good question. Hopefully today I'll just be able to explain that for you. So when we're looking at the properties of polymers and trying to predict about what sort of properties they'll have, there's a couple of things we want to actually um, investigate and consider first. The first thing is, do we have cross links in our polymer chain? So when we've got our long strands of polymers, do we have links that are joining them together? <clears throat> and then the second thing we need to consider is, how many of those links do we have? Okay. So what I always explain to my students first up is when you're trying to think of a polymer, you think of it a little bit like a, uh, a plate of spaghetti, okay, where you've got all these long individual strands. So you've got all these different strands. These are your long polymer chains. They're all made up of lots and lots and lots, like thousands of carbon atoms like this, okay? So initially, this is your most basic polymer. You've got these long strands like this. Now, when I'm talking about crosslinks, I'm talking about bonds that actually join the chains together. Okay, so if you've actually got bonds that connect these up, what you start to do is that you actually start to create links, what we call cross links between the chains. Now, if you can see, imagine this was initially spaghetti, as you start to put these cross links in, you can see that it starts to become looking a bit, a bit more like a brick wall. And if you think about spaghetti, spaghetti is very soft, very flexible, okay, you can shape it and move it around. When you get to a brick wall, it's much stronger, more rigid, more firm. And that's the kind of thing we're looking at. All right, when you add these cross links in, you start to lock these chains in together. You stop them being able to move around. As you add more and more of these cross links in, you get a more and more rigid structure, okay? So, what that basically means is that when you've got no cross links, okay, so when you've got no cross links, generally what that means is you have a low melting point because the chains are easily separated apart from each other. And what it also means is you've also got something that's generally pretty flexible, okay? So consider the type of plastic, things like cling wrap, all right, even plastic bags, okay? Those sorts of things which uh, melt pretty easily, are pretty flexible and uh, have a lot of shape, you can stretch them. Those are examples of polymers that have very little cross links, okay? So they are quite flexible. However, when you add in lots of cross links, okay, lots of links between the chains, you then start to get generally a higher boiling point or melting point all right, and they tend to become more rigid, okay? So this is where you like your hard plastics that you use for chairs, okay, or for tables. Um, when you start to get lots of these cross links added in, okay, what you get is um, things that are much more solid, much more rigid, but when you burn them, they actually char, so they turn black. You can't melt them and remold um, re them into another shape. I'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a video about thermoset and thermoplastic polymers, which is called types of polymers. But for the moment, just if you want to understand polymer properties, all you've got to think about is if there are cross links in there and how many of them. Now rubber is a really, really good example of something which shows the full range of cross linking. Okay? When you're thinking of something like a rubber band, okay, if you've got a rubber band, you stretch it out, you've got these chains, you can stretch these chains out. Now, a rubber band has only a small number of sulfur-sulfur cross-links between the chains. So in between here, we've actually got sulfur and sulfur cross-links, uh, cross which are holding the chains together. Now what happens when you stretch that band is these bonds stretch, but then when you stop stretching it, because of the force of the bonds uh, attracting each other, they snap back together, okay? But if you continue to add more sulfur-sulfur cross-links into the rubber polymer, what you end up with is a very rigid, hard rubber and that's the sort of thing you'll find in car tires okay you obviously wouldn't want a car that would have um, tires that would stretch and bounce as you're going up and down the road as fun as that might be it probably wouldn't be that comfortable you want um, rubber tires which are, have very high melting points there's a lot of friction and heat produced from the road okay and they're also very strong very rigid so rubber's a really good example of that all right so number of cross links is really important and how many cross links there are is also important okay if there are more cross links, it means it generally gets a higher melting point and it becomes more rigid. And that's basically the things that influence the properties of a polymer. 
All right, hope this has been helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, just ask, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.